Gorgona in Italy is Europe's last remaining prison island. Nearly 100 hardened criminals are serving out their sentences here. I robbed a bank and stole jewelry. I was involved in a stabbing. The prison on Gorgona is not only unique because of its location. There are no walls here. The prisoners are to be prepared for a life in freedom through hard work. But it doesn't always work out that way. We've had murderers here. If I said I'm not afraid, I'd be telling a big lie. It's a system of constant vigilance. The radar system monitors the sea around the island. The guards are always on patrol and can show up without warning. Gorgona is a place with many stories to tell. The island's sole remaining resident is nearly 100 years old. The wine produced by the prisoners is a costly delicacy. And the most severe punishment a prisoner can face here is banishment to the mainland. Welcome to Gorgona. Livorno, Italy. Here, we find the fleet of the Polizia Penitenziaria, which is the police division responsible for the prison system in Italy. Every morning at 8 and at 2 in the afternoon, a high-speed boat leaves the port towards the open sea. Its destination is Gorgona, Europe's last remaining prison island. The prisoners are brought here to us and they come on board with an armed escort. You can see the inmates' curiosity the moment they set foot on Gorgona and look around to see where they are, because it's a completely different environment compared to other prisons. You're not surrounded by a wall here. There's no traditional physical barrier that goes around the prison. Captain Vincenzo Porcello has served on the boats of the division for 20 years now. He's brought many prisoners to the island, among them violent offenders, robbers and murderers. The fast patrol boats are getting up there in years, but they run reliably. That can be a matter of life or death here, as the sea is often treacherous. And being faced with weather changes is a common occurrence for the crew. Many times, the boats are forced to turn back in heavy seas, both with and without prisoners. Shortly after leaving the harbor, the captain gives the command, full speed ahead to Gorgona. The island lies about 30 kilometers off the coast of Italy and is part of the Tuscan archipelago. It can only be reached by boat and only with a special permit. The water here is more than 100 meters deep. Gorgona is bustling with activity in the minutes before arrival. The guards are getting ready. The harbor command post is the only building where weapons are stored. Everything that comes in and out has to pass through here. The speedboat makes its way across the sea. When prisoners are on board, they experience the crossing from below deck. Only later do they get to see the patch of land that will be their new home for years to come. The speedboat transport is a daily routine, which is nevertheless meticulously prepared and monitored. On Gorgona, Nelson Cancro makes his way to the harbor. Nelson is a highly experienced corrections officer with over 30 years of service, but he has been on the island for only a few months. He's familiar with all facets of the prison system, from irredeemable criminals of the worst kind to prisoners who want to change and are here looking for a last chance. The island lies in a restricted area, 
nobody is allowed to approach without permission. The only corridor, the only access to the island, is the one that leads to the harbour. It's a sort of channel. The areas to the left and right are closed to sea traffic. After a solid hour of travel, the speedboat reaches the small harbour on the island. Today, the sea was calm and the trip went smoothly. When new prisoners come to the island, they are received right down at the pier. And then, in this cell, they are undressed and once again searched for weapons and drugs. Today, however, only food and other needed items are being brought to the island. Nelson Cancro keeps an eye on the goods and the convicts who are unloading them. Many of them have been on Gorgona for years and will remain here for many more to come. On the island, the prisoners are allowed to move about freely within the scope of their duties, but always under supervision and only during the day. The convicts use mechanical equipment and drive tractors. Work that is considered punishment elsewhere is a privilege here. There are few barriers and fences on the island, yet there are many clear restrictions which are laid out and enforced 24 hours a day, seven days a week, by men like Nelson Cancro. The office of the facility director sits high above the harbor. He has been in charge of Gorgona for years. He's familiar with the overcrowded prisons on the mainland and knows every inmate here on the island. Only those who meet certain criteria have a chance of earning a place in his prison. To be a prisoner here, you have to be in good health. You cannot be addicted to drugs or alcohol. And you can't be a member of the Mafia. The island prison has a long history, as convicts have been serving out their sentences here for around 150 years. Gorgona is unique, and not just because of its location far out at sea. Those who come here are supposed to leave as better men, cleansed through years of discipline and hard work. So far, no one has ever escaped. After 30 minutes, the boat leaves the dock. The lifeline to the mainland is cut off once again until the afternoon or the following morning. Around 80 prisoners are currently held in two prison blocks, many for years. Not all will find their way to freedom from here. Nelson Cancro also stays behind on Europe's last prison island. Together with around 20 colleagues, he's tasked with ensuring a peaceful daily routine and a quiet night. Gorgona is a unique place for both the prisoners and the guards. Whether it's a good one or not is something that can change from one day to the next. A new day on Gorgona, Europe's last prison island. The workday begins for prison guard Nelson Cancro and his colleagues on the morning shift. He begins his watch shortly before six. The sun has yet to come up, but they can't afford to be sleepy. The prisoners are still locked in their cells. The day will soon begin for them as well. The guards are tense. There was a serious incident the day before, which resulted in one prisoner being placed in isolation. 
poco vai. The new day is starting and the morning shift is taking over from the colleagues of the night shift. The shift change occurs at the respective workplace. It's important that the change takes place on site. The harbour command post must also be occupied around the clock. Sunrise over Gorgona. Nelson Cancro makes his way to the prisoners. The youngest among them is barely 20 years old, and the oldest is approaching 80. There are no women here, as it's an all-male facility. The cell blocks are located on a hill only a few hundred meters away. The guards regularly report their positions to their colleagues so that each guard on shift always knows where the others are. This information serves as a type of life insurance for them. In the big prison block, the inmates are awakened at 7 a.m. However, some of the prisoners have to get up a little earlier. These prisoners are housed separately and are subject to a lower level of security. But they too spend the night behind bars. Here as well, the guards work as a team. Nelson Cancro and a second guard holding the key open the cell. First, a heavy steel door is unlocked. Then comes the actual cell door. Angelo Cesaretti has been on Gorgona for four years. His arrest warrant for various drug offenses and robberies was executed in Germany. He has made out well on the island. Angelo Cesaretti is the prison baker on Gorgona. He makes his way to work before everyone else, on foot and alone. Gorgona doesn't need walls as the island is far out at sea. And many inmates also prefer it to the overcrowded prisons on the mainland. The main block is where the worst offenders are incarcerated. 48 cells surrounded by stone walls. The windows have bars and the fence and barbed wire prove that this is still a penitentiary, no matter how idyllic the surroundings may seem. Nearly 80 prisoners are currently held here, most of them for many years. Morning roll call is always the same. It's a cautious routine. Nelson Cancro assists his colleagues. The unlocking is always done as a team. None of the guards carry a gun. There are firearms on the island. However, they are locked away. A confident demeanor and closely coordinated communication are the guards' best protection. I at seven, we open the cells, one after the other. We make sure the inmates are okay and everyone is healthy. We do one cell after another, each one individually. Afterwards, the inmates check in at the guard station and go to work. The prisoners have been locked up for 10 hours without any contact with the guards. Each morning is like opening a black box. You have to be careful because something can always happen. You never know what was going on in the cells at night. Time to begin. First, the guard opens the main gate. The cells are on two levels. Each is secured with two steel doors. Buongiorno. 
The air is stuffy, and the building smells old. Some of the prisoners have a drape in front of the bars. The guards check every single cell, always proceeding with caution. The prisoners on Gorgona have long sentences to serve. Almost all are in for violent crimes such as robbery, assault, and murder. Some are serving sentences of more than 20 years. Almost all of the cells have two occupants, and in the hot Italian summers, it gets stuffy between the old walls. Europe's last prison island awakens to life. A new day begins for the prisoners, and also for Ciccio, a tame blackbird kept by one of the convicts. Unlike its owner, it could choose to be free if it wanted. Ciccio, vai fa un giro. Gorgona is not only a prison, but also a plantation with livestock, a vineyard, and plant breeding operations. It's a plantation run by the inmates themselves, from morning to night. For this reason, after the inmates wake up in the morning, it's time to get right to work. First, the prisoners make their way to the registration station at the exit. Although Gorgona has no walls, it does have strict rules and constant monitoring. Every prisoner has to report in several times a day. The time corridor in which they are not under any direct supervision is relatively brief. If someone doesn't show up when they should, a search begins immediately. Every day, the entrances and exits of the various sectors are monitored here. And every time the prisoner leaves the living quarters to work, it is registered here. In this way, we can monitor how many inmates are outside. There is always a general overview here of the current location of all inmates. Alessandro Lopresti will be working today as well. Just a few years ago, he was feared on the streets as a gang member in the city of Milan. He has a tattoo of an AK-47 on his face. His criminal career of robberies and other offenses earned him a 10-year prison sentence. He's serving the final four years of his sentence on Gorgona, if he behaves. In front of the prison block, the guards are getting ready. They follow a principle of constant vigilance on the island. The prisoners never know when or where one of the guards might show up. Nelson Cancro is assisted today by his colleague Bruno Cocelato. The two have essentially split up the island between themselves for their patrol. Always in constant contact, yet each on his own. In bakery, the day's work begins in the early hours of the morning. Mixing, kneading, pounding. Every day, kilos of flour pass through the baker's hands. This is a mass production operation. Angelo Cesaretti and his co-worker in the bakery make bread for all the prisoners on the island. The guards also consume the bakery products, and not just for breakfast. Whatever the oven yields gets delivered, including pizza. 
We don't have a standard type of pizza here. We make them by order. So that's what we base the pizza on. We can do one, two, three or zero pizzas, but usually we always bring a pizza and a focaccia. Angelo Cesaretti will spend at least another year and a half on Gorgona. He loves his work, and after his sentence is served, he has a good chance of working in a bakery on the mainland as a free man. He's done it before, and in Germany, he even ran an ice cream parlor. But then he went down the wrong path. After years in prison, he has put an end to his criminal past, so he says. His co-worker in the bakery has also been here a number of years. The two are a well-rehearsed team and enjoy a certain preferential treatment on the island. The work here has changed them both. The two former tough guys are now competent bakers. Bakery work has transformed Angelo Cesaretti in particular, even physically, as he admits. In the time I've been here, I've gained a few kilos because I don't do the same day-to-day -day tasks I used to. So I hope I can leave soon and go back to my old routine to lose some weight. Yeah, it would be good for my health too. Prison guard Nelson Cancro has only been on the island of Gorgona for a few months. But he has worked in the prison system for 30 years. He's an old hand in the business. During the day, he has to supervise the prisoners in the field. Not all inmates are suited to all jobs on the island. For those serving a long sentence, it's a privilege to be here because not everyone is allowed to come here. You have to meet certain evaluation criteria and have a good level of resilience. Only those who meet these requirements can make it here. Nelson Cancro has spent his entire working life among convicted felons in the prison system. Gorgona is different, even for him. But the inmates are still hardened criminals. The picturesque surroundings cannot hide the harsh reality, and they must not, because the job remains dangerous. Well, if I were to say I'm not afraid, that's not true. The fear is always there. But you live with it. There's a certain respect. There has to be. Otherwise, you can't get on with the job. Getting on to get out. The road back to freedom on the mainland is long on Gorgona. Alessandro Lopresti used to spread fear. He was a gang member convicted of robbery and other crimes. As a nearly 30-year-old, he is currently serving a 10-year sentence. Today, this former violent criminal looks after goats and cleans their shed. Only his tattoos are reminders of another time. I was involved in a number of robberies. I did time in a prison in the north of Italy. It was okay there, even though I was locked up most of the time. I then heard that the guards here have a better relationship with the inmates and that you can work. So I wanted to come here. Work is important for prisoners. From serial thief to goat herder, life changes don't get much bigger than that. Alessandro Lopresti had nothing to do with animals during his time as a gangster. After all, there are no goats in the center of Milan. And back then, this wasn't his line of work. Now things are different. It's a radical change in outlook under lock and key, albeit with an open door. Since I've been on Gorgona, I've come to appreciate the need for work and the freedom here. There should be more prisons like this because it really helps the inmates a lot. Nobody knows if Alessandro Lopresti will leave his former ways behind for good. Many of the inmates were deep in the underworld. 
but the reoffending rate on Gorgona is lower than on the mainland. And as we'll see later, Alessandro Lopresti has a good reason to stay out of trouble. The inmate of cell 18 went too far and is now in confinement. The holding cell is directly across from the guard station. Nelson Cancro maintains a low profile and is evasive. The incident makes him uncomfortable. Well, what can I say? Mm, let's put it this way. I think there was a problem with an inmate. The incident is quite serious, as it later turns out, and it strikes at the fundamental principles by which Gorgona is managed. The inmate threatened a guard and even ran away. Both are major red flags on Gorgona and will be punished quickly and severely, firstly with isolation. Any hint of violence or poor discipline is immediately nipped in the bud on Gorgona. And this is the only way to defend the freedom of the prisoners and to protect the lives of the guards. Long and sharp knives. The inmates do their own cooking on Gorgona. The large knives are kept under lock and key and must be returned every day. Having inmates standing so close to guards with potential weapons right on the table shows that Gorgona is different. After all, even the cooks here are serious criminals. I worked as a carrier with my truck. I robbed some banks and things like that, which is why I'm here. But I never hurt anybody. Antonio Palumbo spent many years in prison on the mainland for his crimes. And now on Gorgona, he's the one doing the cooking. It almost looks like a few older men sharing an apartment and not like a prison kitchen. Good food is important for a good mood. I've cooked a little bit of everything. Neapolitan style, lasagna and whatnot. A lot of fish dishes. I like stuff like that. Though you can't do that every week. But you can make a list of things to buy for yourself and then cook them here. Here, right next door, the prisoners can prepare little things for themselves. Everyone has their own cabinet in the dining room. Most of the time, however, they read the menu to see what there will be to eat later on. But it's not yet time. Antonio Palumbo and his team still have a lot of garlic to peel. Paolo Penaccione rings the bells. Once a week, a priest comes from the mainland to pray with those who have found God. There are not particularly many. criminals in their past lives now ask for forgiveness for their sins. Paolo Penaccione is a former bank robber. He was given 30 years in prison. The list of his crimes is long. He has already served 14 years. His own cell looks almost like the interior of a church, with crosses, rosaries, literature, and holy images. His deep faith is a comfort. 
molto, certo, certo. Of course, it helps me a lot to withstand these moments. Unfortunately, it's quite painful because I am separated from my family. But faith is an excellent way to overcome such difficult moments. Paolo Penaccione has a cell to himself, which is a privilege he has worked hard for over the years. Now he's in charge of the garden below the cell block. Here he grows beans and salads. The horse track used to be his home, but the stakes grew higher and higher. It was a vicious cycle that ended in jail. Unfortunately, I'm here because I committed several bank robberies. That was a result of my gambling addiction. Yes, unfortunately, I am a compulsive, pathological gambler. And the root of the addiction is money, money to gamble with. So when I ran out of money, I robbed a bank. You know, everybody on the ground, this is a robbery. Yeah, I did it using a toy gun. I never hurt anyone. He may have never physically injured someone, but people were scared for their lives. Paolo Penaccione's punishment is harsh, and he will spend many years to come on Gorgona. Although it seems better than the overcrowded facilities on the mainland, Gorgona is still a prison far away from friends and family. Gorgona can also be a very lonely place. Aside from his faith, Paolo Penaccione has also found comfort in his prison work over the years. From bank robber to head gardener, quite a unique career path. I'm the boss here and I'm in charge of this area. I also really enjoy passing my knowledge and experience on to others. It has to be a labor of love, because it's a great job that requires devotion. And it's here that I've rediscovered my roots. I come from a family that has always done this kind of work. If I had done it on the outside, I certainly wouldn't be here today. <laughs> the vegetables are consumed on the island itself, and sometimes they are sent to the mainland. If the harvest is particularly good, Gorgona supplies the jail in the port city of Livorno, and other times the vegetables are donated to a good cause. In più, in determinati periodi dell'anno, for instance, during Corona, there were problems in the south of Italy. Our products went to charity organizations or to people in need, especially the elderly. Bisognose, dai, persone anziane. Vegetables for the needy. Paolo Penaccione seems reformed. Perhaps Gorgona really has changed him for the better and put him on the right path. However, he still has many more years on the island in which to reflect on his deeds. Perhaps he has a chance at becoming a gardener once he is free. Prison guard Bruno Cocellato makes his rounds and stops at the Gorgona vineyard. The weather, the location, and the careful cultivation make the wine a true luxury product. On the mainland, a bottle costs 80 euros and upwards. The prisoners make the wine, but they're not allowed to drink it. There's a strict ban on alcohol for all prisoners all year round. Gorgona sells the wine through a cooperation partner on the mainland. The proceeds go to the administration. In addition to their small wages on the island, with a bit of luck, the prisoners will see some benefit later on from their vineyard labor. That's because many vintners on the mainland are desperately looking for qualified staff. 
And many don't mind if these people come straight from prison. In a few years, these men will have a good chance of finding a job and a new start. Prison guard Bruno Cocellato drives a lot of kilometers on the island, even though it's a little more than two kilometers long. The principle of constant vigilance is the secret of the island's success. On the road, he meets Nezin Cancro, who is traveling in the opposite direction. After a brief talk, they continue on. Shopping in the prison supermarket. Those who can afford it place their orders with Mohammed Habli, who oversees a wide assortment of goods, such as fresh vegetables, Italian tomatoes for pasta sauces, and chocolate. Mohammed Habli has been in prison on Gorgona for many years, and his job in the prison guard's cafe is a privilege. Once a week, he also processes the orders of the prisoners. They receive money for working the land and spend part of it on special rations. The list is long, and it has to be coordinated with the baker, who delivers pizzas to the guards in the cafe, in addition to rolls and loaves of bread. Two hours later, all of the orders are processed. Once Mohammed Habli has packed everything up, he sets out on the rather arduous uphill journey to the cell block. Bruno Cocellato is also headed uphill. He's on patrol in his off-road vehicle and is going to the highest point on the island where a radar system forms the core of its electronic surveillance. This building is also old, but the equipment works. As it turns, the radar scans the sea surrounding Gorgona day and night. Anything coming or going is seen and monitored. Even if the prisoners did manage to get out onto the water, they would be found. The high-speed police boat in Livorno would set out to put an end to the escape attempt. The area further below is being monitored as well, as Valerio Amato works the day shift in the prison courtyard. He's on his own here among the prisoners, among those who don't work. Like all the other guards, Valerio Amato lives on the island and sees the prisoners every day. It's a common occurrence that the inmates try to forge relations with the guards. For the guards, that can be dangerous. That's why friendships between guards and prisoners are out of the question. We have to maintain distance, even if we live here as well. We have to control their comings and goings to guarantee our safety. And that of the people who come to the island. You have to maintain a balance, because on the outside, there is more distance than in here. You live with the inmates every day, so it can be difficult. But we are trained to keep that distance between them and ourselves. Guards on patrol. This type of dynamic monitoring 
in which guards appear unexpectedly is important on Gorgona. Men such as Nelson Cancro and Bruno Cocellato drive many kilometers a day. The roads are not paved, but the driving style is still fast and rough. The vehicle fleet for the guards is small. The vehicles are in service practically 24 hours a day, every day, in all types of weather. These off-road vehicles are put through a lot. When things break down, they end up here with Ali Rahali. He also worked as a mechanic prior to his criminal career. Today, it's not a police vehicle, but rather a tractor that needs repairs. The radiator has a coolant leak here. This happens almost every day at work. I mean, literally every day. I also have to take care of the generators for the light. The tractor will be running again soon, but it won't be long before something else needs fixing. The demands on man and material are severe. The workshop is sparsely outfitted, and spare parts are scarce. But on Gorgona, everyone learns to get by and function with what little they have. Gorgona is not completely cut off from the outside world, but it's a world unto itself with its own time, structure, and history. Everyone on Gorgona has to adapt to the circumstances, both inmates and guards. It's a community with clear rules and boundaries. Boundaries that have existed for generations and only fall away in one place on the island. There's a small cemetery on a hill. Former residents of the island lie here in eternal rest. Many of them fishermen, former guards, and also prisoners. It's a special place. There are no distinctions. Everyone is equal here. Many tombstones bear the name Chiti. They were once a large family here on the island, when the small village around the harbor was still inhabited. Nelson Cancro and the other guards live in the small main settlement towards the top of the island. For the guards, owning a house is a true luxury. On the mainland, it would be unaffordable for most of them. Right by the sea, there is only one building still inhabited, the home of Luisa Chiti. She's the last remaining permanent resident of Gorgona. Prison guard Bruno Cocellato goes to visit her regularly. Luisa Chiti has forgotten her age, but it must be between 95 and 100. Yes, I was born here on the island. I don't know how my mum managed to live here back then because she came from a poor background and didn't speak Italian very well. The inmates are nice men, aside from the fact that they have to be here and I have a good relationship with them. They help me a lot and fix things for me. I'm not afraid of the inmates. Quite the opposite. Everyone here calls me auntie. Look how many nephews I have. <laughs> Luisa Chiti will probably never leave Gorgona. Europe's last prison island is her home.
For prisoners like Alessandro Lopresti, there's still a life waiting outside on the mainland. But he still has years to serve on the island. After finishing his work in the goat shed, he goes to the weight room in his free time to work out. There are not many leisure activities for inmates on Gorgona. The head prison guard started a chess tournament. On some days, the prisoners are also allowed to receive visitors. But for many of the inmates' families, Gorgona is far away, and then only memories remain. Alessandro Lopresti shows us his cell, in which he will spend several more years to come. He ended up behind bars for robberies, but with hard work and time to reflect, he may now be on the right track. His two children are waiting for him on the outside. Their pictures give Alessandro Lopresti strength and motivation. I'm doing a course right now so that I'm allowed to go out. Slowly, there's some progress. You really need a place like this. The two-man cell will be his home for a few more years, as will the island if he behaves well. It's only a few square meters behind bars, yet still a luxury compared to other prisons in the country. The day is drawing to a close on Gorgona. The incident with the inmate from cell 48 has alarmed the guards, reminding them that the job is a dangerous one and that the mood can change at any minute. The prisoner had threatened one of their colleagues and attempted to flee. The guards need finely honed senses to spot conflicts the moment they arise. Otherwise, a spiral of violence could unfold. Well, you note the tension when you first see them in the morning, the tone of voice when you're around one another, or the nature of the confrontations. Often, they come up to us and ask for help, which is proactive. The problem inmate faces the maximum penalty. He has to leave Gorgona and will serve his sentence on the mainland in a conventional prison. For Nelson Cancro, a long workday soon comes to an end. So, when there are no problems, the days are not all that different. Now all the inmates are inside, and soon things will be locked up for the evening. A check is performed to ensure everyone has returned to their area. Tomorrow, I hope, the day will go the way the last 30 years in this job have gone by. It's now 8 p.m., and for its inmates, Gorgona again becomes a prison. After hours in the fresh air and nature, the heavy iron doors slam shut. The farmers and shepherds once again become convicts behind bars. For the guards, the day ends peacefully and positively in a place where anything can happen. The men will remain locked in for 10 hours. Now, they have time to recover from a hard day's work reflect on their criminal past, and also have time to dream. Perhaps they will dream of a ship that carries them to freedom after years on Gorgona.